Algeria. Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics. I'm Kayode Okikulu. Well, here are the big political stories we have for you on the show today. Well, the plot thickens in the NNPP as well, a group of the New Nigeria People's Party suspends Candlestick Governor Abba Yusuf over what it describes as his participation in an illegal national convention. And the Kaduna State Assembly begins probe of former state governor Nasser El Rufai's use of $350 million World Bank loans. The federal government suspends all mining activities in the Albafani Awolowo University in Ilefe, Oshun State, and its environs indefinitely. Developing news at this hour, popular Instagram celebrity Pascal Lokichuku, also known as Kubana Chief Priest, uh, arrived in court as early as 8.40 a.m. today. That's a federal high court, Ikoyi, for his arraignment on a three-count charge for allegedly spraying and tampering with the Naira at a social event, contrary to the provisions of the Central Bank Act of 2007. And when the counts were read to him, he pleaded not guilty. And his lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria, Chikasolu Ojuku, subsequently asked the court to admit his client to bail. A counsel to the EFCC, Veliki Subuhari, did not oppose the bail application, but instead left it to the discretion of the court. Justice Kane de Udari subsequently admitted him to bail in the sum of 10 million naira, with two responsible sureties in like sum each. Justice Okundari has adjourned till May the 2nd to hear the application. And now to politics in the new Nigeria People's Party's camp, that's the NNPP. Well, a group under the leadership of uh, Agbo Major has suspended the governor of Kano State, Abba Yusuf, uh, for six months over what it described as his failure, that's the governor's failure, to appear before its disciplinary committee to defend an alleged infraction on the party's constitution. Well, his suspension was announced by the national secretary of the group, Mr. Okini Olakwasi, at a press conference in the nation's capital, Abuja. A decision, he says, was taken by the board of trustees in the interest of the party. He said they were yet to come to terms with a decision by the governor to participate in what he described as an illegal national convention of the Kwankwaseya group led by Senator Rabiu Kwakwaso in Abuja on April the 6th. Well, we'll definitely be getting you the other side to this developing story, particularly uh, from the camp of Governor Abba Yusuf himself, getting his reaction uh, to this decision uh, by that group, plus more, because it's a big one happening in Kano State, from well, the governor's uh, purported suspension now and to the probe of former Governor Ganduji. But as we wait to bring you more on that side, let's head over to uh, well, let's head over to our Kano studio now, uh, where we have joining us Mr. Sanusi Baturi, who's a spokesperson uh, of Governor Abba Yusuf. Uh, Mr. Baturi, welcome to Lunchtime Politics. Well, if you can hear me, Mr. Baturi, let's just get right into this. You've seen uh, that particular decision by the group. You've seen the statement as well. Perhaps you've seen uh, the press briefing. So uh, tell us, what is the immediate reaction of Governor Abba Yusuf to this 
uh, decision by the group. And they premise it on his attendance of what he described as an illegal national convention which held in Abuja uh, just over the weekend. For having me, Coyote. But uh, first of all, we need to uh, have the legal perspective of the issue. Uh, for somebody to describe something illegal, that thing has to be prescribed by a competent uh, court of uh, uh, court of competent jurisdiction. Right. So the NNPP, under the able leadership of Dr. Ahmed Ajuji, uh, is the NNPP bonafide political party structure. And the Enabona faction, uh, which Major Abo and others have been making noise around the country, are the faction. So therefore, a faction cannot suspend uh, a leadership of a party that is legally binded. The National Convention happened uh, before the watchful eyes of INEC. And at the same time, it's legal. Why? Because the party has described everything legally possible and has secured the approval of the National Executive Committee of the party. And um, uh, it was held in Abuja. So therefore, there is no point listening to some other people who are a faction and uh, members of the party that were expelled uh, previously by the party uh, to mention this kind of allegation. Uh, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano Sid Alhaji Abba Kabir Yusuf, is a very passionate and active member of the NNPP. And uh, this issue uh, is being sponsored probably by the uh, uh, opposition from Kano. I think bad elements from Kano in the opposition party are the ones sponsoring uh, Major Abu Anko to distract the governor, which is very impossible. Why I say that, if the court case did not distract His Excellency from doing the good uh, giant stride in Kano, then this uh, flimsy excuse cannot really distract him. So therefore, we see this as baseless, unfounded statement, just trying to seek attention of the public. That is why we didn't officially respond to the issue. Well, there's a lot of issues, actually. Now, this one, I understand the cases in court uh, between the Quanquiso group uh, and the other group as well to decide which is which. Perhaps you can speak to uh, that court process if there's been anything definitive uh, regarding that. But there's the other side to this, because in the mix, particularly in Kano State, uh, there's also the APC in Kano State that has accused uh, the governor of being the one uh, behind the suspension by uh, those executives, the suspension of the national chairman of the APC, Mr. Abdullahi Ganduje, former governor of Kano State as well. So this provides an opportunity for you to respond uh, to that major allegation uh, by the APC in your state. Okay, uh, first of all, people need to understand that we are NNPP, we are not APC by any definition and we don't have any relationship directly or indirectly with the APC in Kano or anywhere. And uh, what is happening in the APC, we read in the papers and we watch in the national televisions, is an internal affair of the party, and we have no right to interfere in what concerns the internal workings of the APC. It's not uh, in our attention, it's not in... In, uh, it's not something that we can really pay attention to it. So if they make that allegation, I think uh, it's, it's, it's their own cup of tea uh, because anybody in Kano, I am from Dawakin Topa, Ganduje is from Dawakin Topa, and everybody knows the unpopularity of Ganduje within his local government, within his village of Ganduje. So I'm not surprised if some people came from his village and then to suspend him over what they feel is, is, is legally offensive in their own perspective, according to the APC uh, constitution. So I don't want to dip into this issue because it doesn't concern us by whatever parameter, but uh, 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 APC is fighting itself within and they should sort, sort themselves out. Uh, they should not involve the name of the APC or the name of Kano State government in any way because we are not involved, we are not a party to it, and we are not even interested in anything related to APC. They have one ignorance. Uh, 
uh, they don't differentiate between intra-party affairs and inter-party relations. We can meet at inter-party relations, but intra-party affairs is their basic thing. This is why probably they lost at the Supreme Court during the election petition uh, case, because they kept mounting pressure on something that is within the internal affairs of our party. The issue of membership of His Excellency, they spend so much energy discussing it at the, tri at the tribunal, at the appeal court, and also at the Supreme Court. And at the end, it was clearly spelt by the Supreme Court that issue of membership or any internal issue concerns only the political party and its members. So therefore, this crisis is within APC. We have no relationship with it directly or indirectly. And well, we're not even interested... Right. Yes. On a final note, is you know, in... it's, it's kind of politics and sometimes it's even hard to draw the lines because at some points, one of the politicians has obviously been in the other party. They have been friends before, uh, allies and the rest. But on a final note, the former governor, Abdullah Ganduje, uh, is being probed uh, by the current administration. And it's, it's been a bit sticky. I understand there's meant to be a uh, court uh, sit in today on that. Whether or not he will be attending is another case entirely. But the bigger picture for some people is governance in Kano State. And they are worried that if things keep going the way they are going, then it may make Kano State ungovernable because there might be violence and the rest. So is this a time that uh, maybe Governor Abba Yusuf is considering rallying everybody together, regardless of political party and affiliation, for the good of Kano State. Is there a possibility of mending the relationship between him and former Governor Abdullah Kentuje? Well, uh, politically, no, but uh, community wise, yes, because uh, we're all from Kano and we have nowhere other than Kano. So this is why immediately after his victory at the Supreme Court, His Excellency decided to establish Kano Elders Council, which is a committee of notable personalities from Kano, which Ganduje and his deputy uh, and also the APC candidate are members of that committee. And that committee is not political. It's just uh, a committee that will discuss Kano and provide solutions to the problems affecting Kano alone. That's aside. And on the other side of the proof of the investigation, you know, government is a system. And His Excellency mm. ran a system. Uh, this case is uh, directly under the Kano Anti Corruption and Public Complaint Agency, under right. Barista Muhui Magaji. And this Barista Muhui Magaji that we are talking about is appointed by Ganduji and right. suspended by Ganduji. Muhui went to court to secure order to reinstate him. So, what His Excellency does was just to respect the court order to reinstate Muhui. And we had issue with the Ganduje simply because at that time he wanted to prove some of the government official during Ganduje's administration and some issues related to the first family of Ganduje at that time. And for that, it cost right. him his job. So therefore, we see Mugui well, as, an, as a very neutral and objective person. And he is well, under that agency. You, you've said it that, yes. well, uh, politically, they might not be... Uh, becoming friends anytime soon, but you talked about the community part. So maybe we'll look forward to that. But you know, politics, you can never tell. We'd like to thank you so much for reacting to uh, that reported suspension uh, of Governor Abba Yusuf and the other political issues in the state. We've been speaking with Mr. Sadusi Baturi, a spokesperson of Governor Abba Yusuf, joining us live from our Kano studio. Thank you once again for your time. And we'll, of course, be speaking with you uh, in the coming days on the developments there. Thank you very much. We'll take a moment now, and when we return, we'll turn our attention to Katuna State. There's also an issue. Well, some say it's not personal. It's just government being a continuum. The current administration is probably the previous administration of Governor Nasser El Rafai, plus constituency projects. we we'll take a look at that very thorny issue as well when we return in a moment. Please stay with us. So let's get some more insight for you. Well, the political scene always 
Uh, quite intriguing, really, from the politics to the governance of things. But today we're turning our attention uh, to the very thorny issue around constituency projects. Just recently, uh, there was a protest in River State uh, over federal constituency project. And this uh, took place in Ikwere Emoa federal constituency. And the protesters there uh, asking the leadership of the National Assembly and respective ministries and agencies to ensure uh, that the award of federal constituency projects in their area is compliant with the Public Procurement Act. And that's where we turn our attention to on the show this morning. Public procurement and constituency project have been quite a thorny issue. But uh, let's get to the heart of it. We have a, a man who led that protest, the one that we saw in a river state, Mr. Bethel Chimzi Oku. He joins us right here in our Lagos studio. Good afternoon and welcome to the Lunchtime Politics. Good afternoon. Well, I know this has been for, on for a while for you, but I'd like you to break it down for us because we hear constituency project time and again. And when we hear this, we think of lawmakers. But behind that, we have MDAs that are responsible for this constituency project. So I'd like you to break down your own peculiar issue for us. So is this an issue with the MDAs responsible, not delivering the projects? Because I see you talk about money allocated for speedboats and some other projects not delivered. So what is the peculiar case of your area? Um, our concern basically is just making sure that projects are carried out. Now, our focus currently is on the 2024 Appropriation Act. Right. We have written uh, pre-action notices to all these MDAs and the ministries, letting them know that, of course, they have to do the right thing, which is what? Publish tenders for companies to bid, mm. and then we'll follow the process through and see which companies get the contracts so we can now follow through with the execution. Mm. That's basically what we're asking from them. Although some have called, I received a call. Uh, one called and was denying that those projects are not existing. Oh, yes. And I'm wondering, if the projects are not existing, why, what are they doing in the budget? Interesting. Um, so you say that this is at um, the table of the government agents are responsible for yes. this. And I know that you have a lawmaker uh, representing uh, that area, Boniface uh, Emeringua of the People's Democratic Party. Yes. Uh, I know there's a politics, okay, of constituency project, but let's speak to the governance side of it. So uh, what kind of push are you getting from your lawmakers? I know you've also vied for office, yes, if I I'm did. correct. So it, it, it may have been you actually that the people will protest too if you had won uh, that election. But speak to us about the, the work being done from the lawmaker end, ensuring that this work is done as it ought to be done. Well, um, this whole sensitization program, we started it since January. Yeah. We wrote a letter to him dated 15th of January first. That's to the lawmaker. Yeah, exactly, to him. Asking him for these projects, all of it, so we can know exactly what the projects we are going to be expecting for 2024. He refused to answer. So we went on our own way, got the projects, right? So we know everything now. So on the 25th of March, of course, he came out to make a post on his uh, official Facebook site to list out projects that he has done so far and that he's committed to ensuring that um, he follows through with whatever is left. But we're not satisfied with that because, of course, people have made statements of that nature and then that is expected to allow you to just... Uh, sit you back. know, sit back and yeah. allow them to see what, of course, we know we are not going to be taking those, uh, we won't be taking that chance with him on these particular projects. That's why we are following through to make sure, of course, these things cannot be done without the civil servants aligning themselves with it. So mm -hmm. we are going after the civil servants. We have written to them. We, they will hear from us uh, very soon. I think this is quite interesting because you always hear citizens should be a, a part of governance, get involved, participate. But it's quite interesting how far you're taking this to. And I'd like you to speak to maybe other members of different constituencies in the country, because if people are this active with governance, then I imagine that we can get better dividends. So if you were to speak to constituents that are maybe afraid, if I say something, I might get in trouble, I might be tagged to the enemy, they may ostracize me, what would you want to tell them? Okay. 
uh, this this makes it better for me to make this known. All right, so I'm a lawyer. Yeah. I lead the team of lawyers spread across the six geopolitical zones of the country, focused on this from 2024 to 2027. Now, as leader, I have to show the path yeah. that he can follow. And that's what I'm doing with my own constituency to start with. So, of course, people are waiting and ready to begin this across the constituencies in the Federation. But um, there are little issues that they are having with their security. You know, that's the reason why we wrote a letter to the president. It was received in the State House on the 5th of March, um, endorsed by one Taiwo. In the letter, it was clearly stated, we're asking the president for a particular thing, but we have already made it clear in that letter right. that we're going to be financing the process all through. Okay. Just a particular consent of the president, that's what we need. Right. And it will be a nationwide thing. Interesting. So I do hope that this will encourage others to take up uh, this particular, uh, well, I say mantle, but I'd like to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oku Bethel Chimze. I know this is a conversation we've wanted to have for quite some time, so I'm, I'm glad we're scratching the surface and hopefully we can take you forward in the, in the coming days. Thank you so much. Thank for you your very time. much. Thank you. So let's switch gears now and head over to Kaduna State. There's something that is brewing in Kaduna State. The State Assembly is set to probe uh, the loans taken by former Governor Nasir El Rafai. So let's get into that. And we're joined on the program by the Chairman House Committee on Information of the State Assembly, uh, Honorable Henry Mara, joins us from Kaduna this afternoon. Thank you for uh, joining us on the program, Honorable. Thank you. Uh, and let me just go straight to the elephant in the room, Honorable. Is this a poli political witch hunt? Because a lot of people see this and they think, ah, oh, it's a usual thing current governor or administration against a former administration. We've seen that in Kano, as you can see. Kano State says it's not a witch hunt. So tell us about yours. Is this a political witch hunt? Well, ours is not um, a political witch hunt. Uh, it's just uh, we need clarification in some areas um, so that we'll be on the same page. Um, because um, a lot of monies were collected as loans to execute projects. And of course, we all know that um, you don't collect loans and do uh, uncompleted projects. So the money is uh, collected to execute this project. We've seen that the money has been collected. And um, over 60% of these projects are still lying down uncompleted. And uh, as legislators, it is part of our oversight function to ask questions for the interest of the people of the state. Mm. So we actually uh, want to know what happened. So it's not about right. the former governor. No, it's not about, it's not about witch hunt or anything. It's just okay. to be on the same page. All right. And a lot of people, I mean, you can see the former speaker there. So just to be clear, did the former speaker, Yusuf Seilani, under whose tenure, by the way, I should say, in the Ninth Assembly, uh, the loan was taken. Did he really deny that approval was given by the State Assembly? Well, um, as a matter of fact, he's among those to be investigated because he alleges that um, at a point his signature was forged on some documents. So by the time we go into the investigation proper, we will understand at what point was the signature forged. He but was just at the be, sitting yesterday. He yes, spoke. he was. And I just want to confirm that he said that approval was not given by him for those loans when he was speaker. Very well, he said. Very well, he said so. But not for all the loans, because of course, not one. It's not just a loan. There are so many loans that were taken by the former administration. As a matter of fact, um, in the twilight, in the twilight of the administration of uh, Malam Nasir Arafai, he obtained a loan of twenty billion from Zenith Bank uh, without uh, passing through the house. So uh, these are some of the things we're interested on, and um, we want to dig deeper to. Uh, to know how he got the approval and how the money was expended. Because if we don't give approval, it means we do not legislate on it, and then we do not appropriate it. Mm. So we want to also look at it critically to be sure that um, we don't leave any stone on Tom. Were you also in the house uh, when some of these loans were taken? 
No, no, no. Unfortunately, I was not in the Ninth Assembly. We came in the Tenth Assembly. All right. But um, Just... when you go around the city of Kaduna, you see several projects lying fallow, abandoned, and the contractors have completely moved out of the state mm -hmm. with no hope of coming back to work. So uh, we became uh, inquisitive. We wanted so, to know uh, why, after collecting this so much money, why are the projects not continuing? So that is why we are, we are where we are today. Well, Honorable, I'm just curious. So this investigation happens, and uh, we imagine that it will be objective, uh, well, against what some people have called a uh, possibility that this will be a teleguided. But what then would you do in the eventuality that the former governor is maybe found wanting? Can you really bite? Um, well, you know, our duty as legislators is to make our findings. When we make our findings known, we involve call up, but we don't have the powers to execute, unfortunately. But um, if an action is not taken by the relevant authorities, we may be compelled to approach some quarters for help. All right, uh, quite a number of issues to raise, uh, but. Uh, just quickly, what is the guarantee that loans that may be taken under this administration, if you can do it in 20 seconds, will not be misappropriated? Is there a guarantee for the people? Uh, well, of course, this time around. Uh, you know, the last assembly, the, the Mall of Nassau Refi intimidated, intimidated everybody and did not allow them to function. But as a matter of fact, in this 10th assembly, the case is different. This time around, for every loan that is taken, we must appropriate it, we will legislate on it and give approval, and then we're going to conduct an oversight to ensure that the money collected be used for whatever purpose it is intended. But for now, oh. the government does not have any plan to borrow any money. All right. Well, those are major uh, allegations made against uh, the former governor. And of course, uh, we expect that we'll be reaching out to uh, get his thoughts on this as well. But we'd like to thank you so much, uh, Honorable. This is definitely not the end of it. We'll follow that probe, that process, and of course, uh, get back to you when we need some more clarification. We've been speaking with Honorable Henry Mara, who's the Chairman, House Committee on Information, Kaduna State Assembly. Thank you for your time, Honorable. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, that's been the program for today, everyone. Politics, yes, always intriguing, and we'll always be there for you to give you all of the happenings. I'm Kyoto Kikulu. Goodbye. <laughs>